Hello and welcome to the fourth lesson, the fourth day in this introductory series to the Feldenkrais method of somatic education. The channel is Feldenkrais with Alphons and my name is Alphons. Today's topic is the shoulders or are the shoulders, how they integrate into the movements we did before. So we will see how the shoulders work separately and how they connect into this flexion, lifting of the head, movement, how the shoulders can address even the lowest of the ribs. And if you have pain, shoulder pain, this might very well resolve this pain. It has the power to do so. What you can do with your arms, how easy it is to turn to the left and to the right. This can improve tremendously. So this is a series. If you haven't done the lessons before, I advise you to do the lessons that lead up to today. As always, this takes some time. So it's really an exploration. It is learning through experience. So I invite you into this exploration, into yourself, into your mind, into how you think about movement, how you move, how you sense and how you feel. For this, as always, you will need some floor space. Today, a little bit more space than usual. You have to be able to stretch out your arms. So you will need some space to the left and to the right. And please come to lie onto your floor or onto your carpet. And we will start in a couple of seconds. So we arrive at the floor. Just take a moment to be on the floor, to arrive on the floor. While we are arriving at the floor, let's define some directions. We will need directions for this lesson. So obviously, the floor is in your back, right? You're lying on the floor with your backside. So the direction of the floor is back. The opposite is of back is in front. So the ceiling is in front of you. From your perspective, the ceiling is in front of you. The room is in front of you. The floor is behind you. All right, you have this definition very clear. In front of you is the ceiling. In the back of you is the floor. Left is the same, is left, right is right, is the same. And then we have up and down. So this needs a little bit of a PhD, a little bit of a scientific mind. Where is down? Down is where your feet are. Uh, downwards is where your feet are. The floor is in your back. Down is down where your feet is and up. Up is not in front, but up is where is your head. So we have six directions. In front is the ceiling, back is the floor, up is where your head is, this direction, upwards, downwards is where your feet are, and left and right. All right, so let's get into the starting position of this lesson. Please bring your arms to your sides. Right arm to your right side, left arm to the left side, extended. Not stretched out, but just extended. There should be a 90 degree angle between your arms and your torso. So your hands shouldn't be at your head and not at your navel height, but at your shoulder height, 90 degrees. So make sure, maybe look to your left and look to your right to be really sure that you have this 90 degree angle. So you're spread out on the floor, okay? And then bring your feet to standing. <laughs> this is the right way to instruct it. <clears throat> and now, bend your elbows so that your hands are pointing in front, towards the ceiling. Yeah? So elbows are bent and your upper arms Make sure your upper arms are really in this 90 degree angle. Extend your elbows again, just to make sure. So your arms are spread to the outside. That's very important. And then bend your elbows. Maybe do this a couple of times, two or three times, just to extend your elbows to the side. And then 
Bend your elbows. I hope that's okay with your shoulders. And just do it in a very relaxed fashion. Just place them there, lay them on the floor. Bend your elbows carefully, not too fast, not too hard, so that your lower arms are standing. And your palms of your hands are more or less pointing down. Down, you know, not down to the floor, but down towards the, the feet, the directions we agreed on. <laughs> Maybe not agreed, but I told you the directions in the beginning. So palms are facing down, the back of your hands are facing upwards. So just take a moment to get used to this strange position. And then start to lower your hands downwards towards the floor but don't move your elbows. Be really 100% sure your elbows stay out to the side. And do, do it slowly, slowly, slowly. Lower your, the palms of your hands, together with the hands, obviously, towards the floor, towards. I didn't say touch the floor, I said towards. So it's the direction of the floor, downwards as far as you can go and then bring them up again to center position so that your lower arms are standing. Next lesson we will do more about this standing business. Standing of the lower arms and rotation and so forth. Now we do an easy lesson that connects the shoulders with the torso and differentiates them, of course. Different, differentiation, tell them apart and put them together again. And this will improve your shoulder organization and your chest organization. Continue with this movement, do it a couple of times. I sometimes do something you could call side talking, but I'm doing it to set the mood, to set the learning environment, to give you some extra information while you are practicing. Of course, we could have like very quiet space, would be nice too, maybe. Always make sure that your elbows stay on the floor, pointing outwards, 90 degree angle. So for some people, it will be very, very easy to bring the palms of the hand down to the floor. And for some people, it will be almost impossible. So there's two types of people in this world, right? <laughs> so just see how is it for you? What can you feel actually? Make it very delicate, make it a small, a slow movement. It is an exploration. Of course, there's a rotation in your upper arms. Can you feel how your upper arms roll on the floor? The point of contact on the floor changes for your upper arms. But keep your arms to the outside. Don't slide your, upper, your elbows along the floor. Just feel how you come more and more on your elbows and maybe how your palms touch the floor and come up again and then take a rest. Bring your arms to the outside, elongate your legs, just take, take, a, take a rest on the floor. And we need to quiet down, we need to calm down. I try to lead you into this. This is the opposite of stretching and fixes where you are actually stressed. We try to completely de-stress. We try to relax and enter a state of learning and exploration, which matches our body very well, how, how the brain works, how learning works. So please, back into the starting position, the arms to the outside. Long arms, get your feet to standing, bend your elbows. And this time we do the other direction, maybe you already guessed it. So bring the, what's this called? 
the backside of your hands upwards to the floor. Towards, upwards, towards. So it's not touching, but it's upwards. And make sure that your elbows don't slide on the floor. You can feel this gravity and that your upper arms might fall or you have to lead them and just see how far is easy. So again, for some people it will be very easy to touch the floor, for others it isn't. Just do what's easy for you and always make sure that your arms, your upper arms are pointing outwards. You can always elongate your elbows just to check just to check that your arms are spread 90 degrees to the outside then bend your elbows again and start this movement again and make sure there's a 90 degree angle between your lower arm and your upper arm. If you like you can rotate your lower arm around its axis but don't extend the elbows. The elbows should be 90 degrees not more not, not less. And up and back and maybe you can feel where there's room. I think more people, for more people up is easier than down. Yes, so yeah, Com combine these two. Go downwards and you can go upwards and just compare the quality. You, can, you might feel your upper arm is rotating. You might feel already a connection to your pelvis and through the whole spine and to the neck. We gather information about this movement. Then extend your elbows again, extend your legs and take a rest. And we arrive more and more on the floor. <laughs> that was a rhyme. Now we will add stuff to this movement. Come into the starting position again. The arms spread to the outside, 90 degree angle. Bending the elbows, 90 degree angle. Bring your feet to standing. Now we go downwards again, bring your palms towards the floor, downwards, but together with the palms also lift your head and lift your shoulders. So you, you use what we have learned in the previous three lessons to lift the head and the shoulders together to bring the palms of your hand to the floor and it's extremely important that your elbows don't slide. I wouldn't call it cheating, but you will miss the effect of this lesson if your elbows slide. So you bring, you lift your head, of course, the chin to the chest, of course, you can work with the breathing, of course, you can work with your eyes, with your pelvis, all the things we already know, we already explored, and then come down into the starting position, and try that for a couple of times. And you will see, of course, when you lift the head, it's even easier to touch down the palms of the hands onto the floor. And it's a lifting of the shoulders. So the shoulders consists, more or less, of the upper arm bone, the humerus, the shoulder blade, and the clavicula. We have three bones and of course all the muscles and nerves and blood supply and all the sensors and all the, the stuff that's inside. It's, we are very delicate, very delicate hardware, very complex, lots of stuff inside. But we don't have to know all these things. We can focus on learning and improving. Yeah. So you did that a couple of times. Also, do you lift your head before you lower the palms of your hands? Or do you lower the palms of your hands? Yes, sometimes you lower, lower, lower. And then at some point it makes sense to lift the head in order to be able to come down completely with the palms of your hand to the floor. 
and then you can lower the head again and bring your hands back to the starting position. So this is a coordination exercise. Do you go together? Well, same quality, same speed, same effort, same travel time of your head and your palms. Or do your palms go first? Or you could consciously move your palms first and your arms and roll your upper arms and make sure the elbows don't slide. And then your head first or the head last. You just play with this connection a little bit or you can lift your head first and then the palms or the palms and the head independent from each other. Play with it a little bit. See what you can do. You can go asymmetrical. The rules of the game are don't slide your elbows. The upper arms have to point to the outside. There has to be a 90 degree angle between, <laughs> sorry, I repeat myself, but it's important. I can't see what you're doing. So I have to prophylactic to, to tell you in advance. 90 degree angles and then the coordination and the speed is up to you what you do. All right, then take a break again. I, how is it for you? For me, I can already feel my shoulder blades a lot better than in the beginning of the movement. It's very interesting how such small movements can shed light, bring light into the body and make us able to be aware of things we would have no chance to feel at all without this kind of movements and exploration. Of course, it's not only improvement in being able to sense and feel, but it's an improvement in organization and how everything works and functions. It's getting much smoother. All right, then please come into the starting position of the, our explorations again. So the arms to the outside, the feet standing, elbows bent, 90 degree angles. And this time, as you can imagine, or as you can guess, we go upwards. So the hands upwards towards the floor, but this time we don't lift the head, but you lift your pelvis. So you have to stand your feet in a good position where you're able to lift up the pelvis, lift the pelvis. There's no need to roll it upwards, but you just lift the pelvis. And the higher you lift the pelvis, the easier it will be to touch the back of the hands to the floor above. And then come back down. So for some people down will be easier, for others up will be easy. For some people both directions will be equally difficult or equally accessible. As always, make sure your elbows do not slide on the floor. And now with this gentle quality, explorative mind, lovingly honor yourself. Don't push against end range, pushing against end range, pushing, pu pushing, <laughs> pushing, pushing against end range is a stretching. We do not stretch, but we explore movement possibilities. So you can lift your pelvis first or last, or just do like, how do you call pelvic bridge, pelvic raises. You can use your glutes, of course. This is a nice glutes workout. And see the connection of how your, the back of your hands can touch the floor and how your shoulder blade is actually able to move. The shoulder blade is in between your skin and your chest, the ribs and, and the muscles. And the shoulder blades can move internally downwards. And come back up back to the starting position and 
always take like a breath in the starting position and then go back up with the palms of your hands until it makes sense. Of course, there's the neck and there's the eyes and there's the breathing. Maybe you want to breathe in or you can breathe out. It's up to you. Just don't slide the elbows. Make sure you have 90 degree angles and lift your pelvis to allow for this movement, to allow for the back of your hand touch the floor, to feel the connections inside the body. And then elongate your arms again, your legs, come back, have a small rest, a pause. All right, then back to the starting position, arms to the outside, feet standing, elbows bent, 90 degree angles, and now just bring the palms of your hands downwards. See how that feels, how easy your shoulders lift off the floor, separate from your chest, and the other directions, how the back of your hands go up, and your shoulders, they can, the shoulder blades, they can slide in between your chest downwards, towards your feet. That, that should be the movement. When your hands go down, the shoulders go up. When your hands go up, the shoulder blades go down. It's like a pater noster. This is like the old style elevator you find maybe in Italy or in some old European cities. When the hands go up, the shoulder blades go down. When the hands go down, the shoulder blades go up. Yeah. So we have the same movement like in the beginning, but without lifting the head and without lifting the pelvis or lift the head to help this movement. Or we can lift the pelvis to help this movement. To, this is like an auxiliary movement, we call it. It's not part of the main movement, it's auxiliary, but it will improve and clarify how we do the main movement. All right, then take a break. Feel how you're lying on the floor, feel how you can feel your ribs, your shoulders, your spine while you're lying on the floor. If these parts of yourself become more clear in lying on the floor, in your contact to the floor, then bring your elbows and your arms to the outside again, stand your feet, bend your elbows 90 degree angles. So this is the starting position. We stay in the starting position for a couple of seconds. Make sure you keep the 90 degree angles. My shoulders are starting to wake up big time. They want to slide the shoulder blades to be able to be separate and be able to direct the movements of the chest. Quite interesting feeling. Now, you may already guessed it, please lower your right hand so the palm of your right hand is starting to approach the floor downwards and at the same time raise your left hand so that the back of your hand approaches the floor upwards, keeping your 90 degree angles, don't move your elbow. Same thing as before but arms, hands in separate directions. One hand is going up, one hand is going down. Keep the 90 degree angles. That's super important. If you're not sure, have a look left and right or extend your arms again, bend your elbows again, just to make sure you really have these 90 degree angles. And 
And then the other way also, of course, the right hand upwards, the left hand downwards. And this is not an exercise, of course, you know that already, but a movement exploration and you try to gather as much information as your body is providing to you. About your breathing, of course, but the rotation of your upper arm, how you touch the floor, how the point of contact shifts. So on the side, where your hand is traveling downwards, the shoulder is lifting. And on the other side, where your hand is traveling upwards towards the flow, your shoulder blade is depressing, is going downwards towards your feet. And then the other way around. Make sure you keep the 90 degree angles. That's the most important. That your hands don't travel outwards and not inwards, but only up and down and that your elbows, they do not slide. All right, then take a break. Extend. Feel how you're resting, how your contact with the floor is improving further. Then bring your arms to the outside again, bend your elbows, 90 degree angles, get your feet to standing again. The standing feet is important so the pelvis is free to move. If your legs are long, the pelvis is more in a fixed position and then it will uh, stop the spine from moving so well. But we need a flexible spine, a flexible chest, so you have your feet standing. That's the whole reasoning behind it. All right, so we are in the starting position again. Please bring the back of your right hand towards the floor upwards, the palm of your left hand towards the floor downwards, same movement as before. And you might already have felt it. Maybe you have done it already because it's the next logical move is to rotate your head. Yes, the shoulders affect the movement of the head. So you roll your head. Maybe rotation and rolling is two different things, but you can combine them to one, or maybe just the rolling. You have to roll your head on the floor to accommodate this movement of the arms, of the elbows, of the upper arms and the shoulders, but in which direction do you have to roll the head? That's the big question. But if you really feel into you, that's not much of a question. It's just very logic. It will just happen by itself. Actually, if you stop thinking about it, it will happen by itself. If you really try to bring down the hands towards the floor, and you work the shoulders, you lift and depress the shoulders, then your head will roll by itself. And if I have a room with 10 people, everyone will do the same movement. Maybe that's because we have a skeleton and muscles and basically the same system. Try to keep the 90 degree angles. And you will find that your head rolls, that your face turns towards the arm that is lifting. The arm that is going up, the back of your hand that is touching the floor. Can't be much different. Can't be any otherwise actually. Because if you think about it, the hand that goes downwards, this shoulder is lifting. It's lifting and it's pushing your head actually to roll into the opposite direction. Whereas the shoulder that is depressing, the shoulder that is going downwards, it pulls, it pulls your head to, to its side. So one side is pushing, the other side is pulling and it can't be any different.
keep exploring this movement for a bit. So in this introductory series, I will continue very systematically with you. In a live class, I would take a different course of action now. I would guide you into a very nice twisting movement. But in this introductory series, I want to really stick to a schedule. And so please just come to rest on the floor. Extend your arms or just like... Rest your arms, rest your legs, rest your torso, rest your neck, rest yourself. And maybe feel the sensation of resting, of your contact to the floor. Floor. <laughs> Maybe you feel fresh, I feel fresh. We will do a little bit of variation to wrap it up, to make it a little bit deeper. So please extend your arms to your sides and keep them lying on your side. Stand your feet, so the arms are 90 degrees extended, resting on the side. Make a little bit of fists. Don't clench your fists, but just a little bit of fists. Very easy, very easy fists. And slowly, slowly, slowly start to roll your arms a little bit. So you roll your upper arm and your lower arm, so your elbows, you roll them a little bit, just casually roll them or just start with rolling one arm and then roll the other arm. A little bit, more or less 90 degrees. If you really keep the 90 degrees, of course, it's a rotation. Or you do a little bit of rolling. So the arms go a little bit upwards and they go a little bit downwards. And try to just enjoy this business of rolling your arms. And then you can combine the rolling. You can do opposite directions. I guess if you don't think about it, it will be opposite directions, but it can be same directions also. And you will find when you start to think about it, that it's very similar to what we did before. The only difference is a little bit motion on the floor, yes. Elbows sliding a little bit, but the main difference is the elbows are not flexed. And if you think about it, you can let go of your neck and have the head roll from side to side. And here is the same business of rolling. To which side is your head rolling? You can answer these questions by now, I hope so. Where is your head rolling? You're facing which direction? So, yes, the answer is, of course, your face is rolling towards the thumb that is going up. The thumb that is going up. And the back of your head is pointing in the direction where the thumb is going down. Yes, please bend your elbows again, 90 degree angles. So you have 90 degree angles everywhere in your arms and then do the same thing as before. The back of your head, hand goes up and the palm goes down and you roll your hand 
together with this movement. So it's the same movement as we did just right before with the extended arms, but now it's with flexed elbows. And then extend your arms again and continue with the same movement. And then flex your elbows again and continue with the same movement and extend and flex and everything in between. And make sure your elbows don't travel that much. Your elbows should be extended towards the sides. You can have your chest participate, you can feel it in all of your ribs. Then start to take a rest again. <laughs> that was almost fun, wasn't it? Now we have a different sensation. Now I feel like I'm warming up. It's like a warm-up routine for sports. We will do one differentiation and then we will leave it for today. So please, arms to the outside, feet standing, elbows bent, 90 degree angles. Bring one hand up and one hand down, but this time volunteer, uh, deliberately by willpower, turn your head in the opposite direction. Turn your head facing towards the arm that is going downwards. And please participate with your shoulders. You can exaggerate the shoulder movement. So you really have to make an effort to turn the head in the opposite direction. You can help with your eyes. I'm not sure that you can help with the breathing, but you can sure help with your eyes by looking into the, direction, into the direction you're turning your head. So your head should turn into the wrong direction. Your head should turn into the direction of the hand that is going downwards. and then switch the direction to look again into the right direction, which is to the hand that goes upwards. And then extend your arms again and just roll your fists, roll your arms on the floor and see the same movement. And maybe your chest is starting to be more flexible already Little bit of side bending involved, maybe. Little bit of shifting your weight to the left and to the right. So it's not only the head turning, but the head also moving into the direction of the hand that is, the palm that is, the, the th thumb that is going upwards. The really rolling business of the head. and the shoulders working. All right, then take a last rest. <laughs> this is very interesting. Uh, my feeling completely changed. My relationship to the floor is completely changed. My elbows, no, my shoulders are free. I feel like I'm lying with my rib cage on the floor. How is it for you? Would be interesting to, to read about your, your feelings, your sensation. If you don't mind, leave a comment and share what you experienced. Now let's check with the first movement, our reference movement.
please. Arms to the side, elbows bent, get your feet to standing and just move both hands downwards. You can lift your head or not lift your head, just feel how is it compared to the beginning. And then of course palms upwards and feel how, how is that movement. All right, that was fun and very interesting. I like this lesson. So please come to sit. Feel how it is like to sit. And then of course, like in every lesson, Feldenkrais lesson in the end of it, Please come to stand. <laughs> Take a couple of seconds to arrive in standing. <laughs> Different organization towards the floor. Now the floor is below you again. Up is towards the sky again. In front is in front and the back is the back again. Left and right is the same. And feel, feel your shoulders, what you can do with your arms, how easy it is to turn to the left and to the right. Oh, I forgot to mention that. This can improve tremendously. How it is to look up and how it is to look down. How it is to balance your head on top of your shoulders, the shoulders on top of your pelvis, the pelvis on top of your feet. How you can turn in standing. Try these things a little bit. And if you have progress, progress, you can imagine if you do it a couple of times, this lesson, the progress will even be uh, increased. And maybe you can have a day or like a week in between and then try it again. We need times of rest to integrate, time to integrate. <sighs> Wunderbar. <laughs> so thank you for having uh, participated in this lesson together with me. And if you like this video, as always, please like the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. And I wish you a wonderful day or a good night and see you in the next video.